What's going on everyone? My name is Eric and this is the Get Me Out of Here vlog. Today I'm in the city of Chicago and behind me is the Chicago Field Museum. One of the largest natural history museums in the world. You can see there's a Segway tour going on behind me too. Yes, you can do Segway tours here in Chicago. But anyway, back to the museum. This is one of the largest natural history museums in the world. It's got a magnificent collection full of dinosaur fossils, bones, tons of ancient relics from ancient Greece, China, and other parts of the world, Egyptian mummies, and tons and tons of taxidermied animals. There's so much to do and see here. It's one of my favorite museums in the United States, and it's been in this building here since 1921. So they just celebrated their centennial birthday last year. It's now 2022, so I'm ready to kick this off. It's been years since I've been inside this museum, but I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to show you around. So follow me to the Chicago Field Museum. Loving that totem pole here at the front entryway. And that guy riding the Segway has a Viking helmet on. I don't know if he brought them himself or they offer Viking helmets on the Segway tour, but either way, what an amazing building this is, an awesome structure. It's been standing here since 1921. So this is not the original location of the Field Museum. Back in 1893, when the Chicago World Fair took place, that was one of the most grandioso events the world had ever seen. It drew 27 million tourists into the city of Chicago that year. And a lot of the exhibits here on display at the current Field Museum made their debut at the Chicago World Fair back in 1893. When the fair ended, a lot of the exhibits moved to the Palace of Fine Arts. Now, the Palace of Fine Arts still exists. It's in Jackson Park here in Chicago. In fact, the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry is currently located in that building. It's been renovated a bit since, since then, but that is the original Palace of Fine Arts, the only remaining structure from the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. But this building here that the field house is now housed in opened up in 1921. And one more fact for you is the Field Museum got its namesake from Marshall Field, who is the father and owner of the famous department store chain Marshall Fields, which is still, the building still stands here in Chicago. But he donated millions of dollars to create this museum. And of course they named it after him. Absolutely loving the views here. Grant Park and the Chicago skyline. There's the Sears Tower to my left. And there is Lake Michigan straight ahead, one of the largest natural lakes in the world. And right next to the Field Museum is the Shedd Aquarium. Well, without further ado, let's head inside and I will show you what the Field Museum has in store. Just breathtaking. Look at this great hall here at the Field Museum. A large taxidermied elephant and what looks to be a brontosaurus skeleton. Now they used to have Sue the T-Rex here on display in the, in the Grand Hall, but I don't see her. So I'm assuming they moved her to a different section of the museum, probably in the dinosaur portion so I hope I hope to find that a lot of ground to cover today so it says right here that these elephants were one of the first museum icons when it was in the old Palace of the Art Fine Arts building in Jackson Park here in Chicago it was actually created by Carl Ackley himself who is regarded as the modern the founder of modern-day taxidermy well let's start here there's a nature walk entering the Hall of the Birds. And it's just full of taxidermied birds from all over the world. There's some of those pesky Canadian geese. They like to come here and make a menace every spring in Chicago. And look at this, California condors, these massive vultures. According to the sign here, the condors no longer hatch in the wild today. They're on the endangered species list, but look how magnificent these things look. Here's a display of a golden eagle about to feed its young with a rabbit that it caught. Oh, poor rabbit. 
He's, he's gonna be dinner. He's gonna be dinner, not gonna be a good time for the rabbit. Here's a display of recently extinct American birds. And I never knew this, the passenger pigeon is extinct. I had no idea. They existed in hordes as late as 1878, but they're no longer here. These were also displayed in the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. That's the Chicago World's Fair. That's how far back these taxidermied birds go. They've been extinct for well over 100 years. Just amazing, the collection that they have here at the Field Museum. And I wanted to point out the common grackle I see a lot in the Midwest. Every time I travel to the southern part of the United States, especially the southwest, Texas, Arizona, Southern California, you see a lot of these boat-tailed grackles, and they are way louder than the common grackle you see here in the Midwest. These things are so loud down south. Something I've noticed in my travels. Also, I had to give a shout out to the American goldfinch, the official state bird of Iowa, the Hawkeye State. I'm originally from Iowa, so I had to give a shout out to that. Probably my favorite bird, the great horned owl. Gotta love the owl collection. The predators of the night. Quote the raven, nevermore. Tucked away in the corner here, the bald eagle, the official bird of the United States. It's a protected species, and it's tucked away here in the corner at the museum. Had to showcase that, had to, had to represent a little bit. Here are the largest birds currently on Earth. Ostriches, emus. It's just, it's really incredible how huge in ostriches. It's very intimidating when you see one in real life. I had a friend growing up in southwest Iowa that had an emu farm too. So grew up seeing a lot of emus here in the United States, believe it or not. A herd of mountain goats here on display as well as we walk into the Hall of Mammals. Wow! Look at this! Right here in front of me is one of the most famous taxidermy exhibits in the world. This is called The Four Seasons, and Carl Akeley, who is known as the father of modern-day taxidermy, created this over a hundred years ago. It took him over four years to put this together. It depicts the life of four deer, a buck, a doe, a young buck, and a fawn throughout the seasons here in the Midwestern United States. So right here, this is spring that I'm looking at. This is early spring. You can see everything is still kind of thawing out of winter. The buck doesn't have his antlers yet. Nothing is really green. This is actually very typical of Illinois and the upper Midwest. Early spring is muddy, kind of gloomy out to be honest. Nothing really to look at in March and early April. But as we move into summertime, you can see how everything has greened. The leaves are out. The buck has his antlers out. We've got the lily pads. The water is no longer ice. This is the season of summer. There's the young fawn with his mother. And then here we move into fall. This is the season of autumn. You can see the leaves are changing. They're turning red, yellow. Oh, you can see the buck is starting to molt. His antlers are starting to molt. I think that's what it's called. He's rubbing his antlers against the trees. So this is the season of autumn, the season of fall here in the Midwestern United States. And then we move into winter. You can see all the snow on the ground, the deer's hoof prints in the snow, and the buck still has his antlers. 
kind of reminds me of the scene in the movie Bambi when his mother dies. But look at that. That is incredible. So the amount of detail that Carl Akeley put into this diorama is just stunning. I read online that he used sugar laced in arsenic so that small animals wouldn't eat the sugar here at the museum back in the day. So the snow is actually sugar laced with arsenic in this exhibit. So this here is one of the more unique exhibits here at the Field Museum. Not a lot of people know about this, the history behind this, and, and really what Carl Akeley did. This was one of the first exhibits that really depicted the changing seasons and really put art to the science. You look at taxidermy, it, it's kind of, you know, obviously it's a science, it's depicting what these animals looked like, but he actually kind of created a more lifelike display, bringing it more to life. So it really combines art and science. Just a beautiful exhibit that depicts the family of four deer through the changing seasons. Here there is a mountain lion hanging upside down, apparently to kind of depict uh, back in the day in the American West, mountain lions were a nuisance to the mule deer population, kept eating them, so they were hunted down and hanged on display like you see here. Don't mess with the mule deer. Da bears, da bears. Up bears would not want to mess with a polar bear. They might look cute in the zoo, but these things I think kill more people every year than any other bear. Just look how big they are. Wow. Oh my gosh, look how massive this brown bear is. Holy cow, that would be terrifying. Look at that thing. That is from Alaska. Now I've heard of this island, the Kodiak Islands in Alaska, which is like a modern day Jurassic Park. They have the largest bears roaming wild and rampant on that island. That is insane. An island full of man-eating bears. It's also amazing to me how large moose are. Just look how big they are. Like their legs are so high off the ground. I'm really happy there's no moose here in Illinois because I couldn't imagine hitting one with my car. That wouldn't go so well. It wouldn't be like a white-tailed deer. That thing would make my car explode. You really could spend an entire day here looking at all the taxidermy displays here at the Chicago Field Museum. It's, in, it's just amazing to me. They've got animals from all corners of the world here on display. I have to give a shout out to my sister's favorite animal, the Malay Taper. There you go, Krista. Found in Southeastern Asia when we were growing up as kids, we would go to the Omaha Zoo a lot, and we loved watching the tapers in the indoor rainforest that they have at the Henry Dorley Zoo in Omaha, Nebraska. So there you go, the taper. All the orangutans hanging out in the jungle. Gotta love the little baby orangutan hanging from the tree with one arm. Very, very lifelike. It's unbelievable the work that was done a hundred years ago to make all of these displays. All of these vicious looking baboons. A baboon butt, there you go everyone. Some baboon butts. And uh, I do love those colorful snouts that they have. This is a mandrill. But yeah, I would never want to keep one as a pet. I've heard too many horror stories from people that think it's a good idea to keep a baboon or monkey as a pet. <laughs> Love these guys, the gibbons. Such weird animals. Look how long their arms are. And then of course we've got another orangutan. A chimpanzee. 
and a lowland gorilla here on display too. Beautiful creatures. Now wait a minute, right next to the gorilla it says who is the most unusual primate? Oh, it's me. <laughs> I guess I'm the most unusual primate here on, not just the Field Museum, but here in the world, the YouTube vlogger. They've got skeletons too, of all the apes. Here's a skeleton of a lowland gorilla, and here's a human skeleton as well. I don't know if that's a real person who has donated his skeletal system to the Field Museum. I'd like to think it is, but who knows. Hanging above me is a massive whale skeleton. Just look how big that is. Unbelievable how large whales are. And what is this here? It looks like a giant wishbone of some type. After reading the display, these are whale teeth. The gums and the teeth sticking out. Look how freaking big these are. The mouth of a whale. I stand corrected. And look at the warthog here on display and little baby piglet warthogs as well. It's just amazing. Look how realistic that hair looks on the warthogs. Assuming that's their natural hair, but I, I don't know. Here on display, the Somali wild ass. That's not my ex-girlfriend. It's actually a herd of wild asses. Somali wild ass. And there's the, the ass of the Somali wild ass. And right here are the lions of Sabo. These are probably one of the most famous taxidermied animals here in the Field Museum. These are perhaps the deadliest lions in recorded history. Back in 1898, between the months of March and December, these two lions apparently devoured dozens of railway workers. They were building a railroad in the Savo region of Kenya in Africa called the Kenyan-Ugandan Railway. And dozens of people working on that railway were eaten by these two lions. And they actually made a movie based off of that event the Ghost and the Darkness, starring Val Kilmer and Michael Douglas, that came out in 1996. But these were two deadly man-eating lions that were killed later on in December of 1898 and displayed here to this day at the Chicago Field Museum. In fact, they've got an interactive display in front of the lions. This gentleman here, J. H. Patterson, brought the lions to the Field Museum in 1925. So they've been here for almost 100 years on display. these lions over a hundred years ago they were throw rugs you can see they were a lot larger in real life than they are here because they've gone through a lot of physical changes since they've died to be taxidermied but still just amazing to see they have these on display definitely one of the highlights here in the field museum I turned a corner and more and more taxidermied animals this collection just keeps stretching on and on and on here on the first floor of the Field Museum. And here it looks like it's changing up a bit. Could be getting aquatic here in the next room. Jars of giant earthworms. My God, how old are these? Two worms, a leech, a sea mouse, marine segmented worms. I think it's getting a little buggy in here. In fact, this looks like fish bait. Interesting. 
Oh, yuck, look at that, a tapeworm. Oh, wouldn't want to find that in your gut. Well, I've gotten out of the taxidermied section. I'm entering ancient Egypt. Here is the reconstructed tomb of Unis Ankh, if I'm pronouncing that right. So we're stepping back in time. And I have a feeling there's gonna be a few mummies around. Lots and lots of stairs in this reconstructed ancient Egyptian tomb. Wow, and there it is, the first mummy sighting. Look at that. So this was one of the first mummies brought to the Field Museum in 1894. And it's thousands of years old, look at that. Hopefully it doesn't wake up. Yeah. Gotta be quiet, don't wake up the mummy. <laughs> Look at all these ancient relics on display from ancient Egypt. And I say that and then I see the sign, it's filled with fakes. So I stand corrected, these are fake ancient relics left behind by tomb robbers. The Book of the Dead is a guide to the afterworld. And there is the Book of the Dead displayed up here. I'm not, I'm not gonna read that. I, I don't, first of all, I don't know how to read hieroglyphs. And secondly, I don't wanna wake up a mummy and be cursed for the rest of my life. I remember reading about this in school, that if your heart was heavier than the feather, then this monster known as Amit would devour you, and it would mean permanent death. So yeah, you don't want to be devoured by Amit. The body of a lion and the head of a crocodile. That is another ancient Mommy, that is incredible. You can see its skin on its face. That is a well-preserved corpse, if I ever... I, I don't have an experience in, in corpses, but yeah, it, it's very well-preserved. Look at this. Stunning. It's a Dynasty 25 mummy, so thousands of years old. Just look at that. Whoa, and it's a mummy of a child, it looks like. Laying down on display. That is incredible. That is insane. Look at that. Thousands of years old. Still has its skin. You can still make out its face. And just the sarcophaguses, all the artwork. hard for me to even comprehend how much time has passed since these were made. And that's just a blink of an eye in the history of the world. is from 1080 BC to 712 BC. So many mummies here. This one's still bandaged up. There's another small child mummified. Oh. There's another large 
wrapped mummy. Thousands of years old. Wow. I looked up and just saw they have a pair of mummified feet right there. Those are mummified feet. You can see the toes. That's insane. So I didn't know about this. Here in the basement, or the lower level of the Field Museum, is the Lion of Mufawe. Mufuwe. The Lion of Mufuwe, that's how you pronounce it. But this is another man-eating lion that devoured more than six people, it's estimated, back in 1991 in Africa. So they've got the Lions of Savo. There's a little sign for that that we saw earlier. But downstairs hiding is another man-eater, the Lion of Mafue. I never knew about this. This is new to me. This looks pretty cool. DNA Discovery Center. This kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park, that little cartoon. Dino DNA. What is DNA? That is a good question. So they've got an actual laboratory where you can view scientists and biologists hard at work. You can tell that, you know, they're taking a break it's Sunday afternoon. You need a day of rest, I get it. But yeah, I think on a, on a normal weekday during regular work hours, you can come to the Field Museum and watch scientists hard at work. Holy cow, turned a corner, about to enter an evolving planet, which is where the dinosaurs are displayed. Look at this massive flying dinosaur. I was going to say pterodactyl, but I don't think that's a pterodactyl. This thing is enormous. I don't know if it is built to scale, but it's a pterosaur. If that's how big this thing was, this would be terrifying flying around in the sky. Entering the evolving planet exhibit here at the Field Museum. Welcome to Earth four billion years ago. Nothing but volcanoes and fire. The first life was single-celled by 3.5 billion years ago microbes. Tiny single-celled organisms were living in Earth's oceans. Here's the skeleton of an ancient fish an erodus or a type of shark from I guess 400 million years ago is what they're saying wow and now I'm entering the carboniferous period 359 to 299 million years ago when wetlands and forests appeared on the planet and there's a giant dragonfly So I think bugs made their appearance then as well. And here's the age I was looking for, the Permian period, the beginning of the dinosaurs. I used to have a fascination with dinosaurs as a kid, I think most people do. And I used to call this one the chip back. It's always reminded me of a potato chip. But that's not its real name. Its real name is Edaphosaurids. Just learned something today. I used to just call them chip backs because I was I was a kid and, and I was kind of lazy. These dinosaur fossils age back to 299 million years ago. I can't even fathom that. They've got an amazing display here. You can see the timeline of the prehistoric eras of the planet Earth, starting with the Precambrian area with volcanoes, fire and brimstone, the Devonian period with aquatic life, the Carboniferous period with the trees and plant life appeared, and then the Permian period. And now we're enter entering the Triassic period, 252 million years ago, the beginning of the age of the dinosaurs, or I guess the continuation maybe, I don't know where that Permian era stands, but dinosaurs 
here on the planet, the Jurassic period, the Cretaceous period, and then all the way up to today, with us humans ruling the earth. Walked around the corner and look at these displays. This is what I came to find, the dinosaurs, the age of the dinosaurs, the fossils. Look at this. Now this is an Archosaurus. It almost looks like a Velociraptor from the Jurassic Park movies. You can see the claws. And now entering the Hall of Dinosaurs. Look at all of these dinosaur bones. Here's a cast of an Allosaurus head. It's kind of a smaller version of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And this is a Despletosaurus, a smaller cousin of the T-Rex. You know, if I were alive back then, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They're both giant predators that want to eat me. But yeah, it looks very similar to a T-Rex, just a smaller version of it. Here is a Triceratops. Just look how big these things are. Just trying to imagine, imagine if they were alive today, how much they would dwarf the modern day mammals. Here's a Stegosaurus. It's got the plates on its back and the spiked tail. It lived 206 to 144 million years ago. It's got such a tiny head compared to its large body and look at the spikes on its tail. Look how big these things are. Jeez. Yeah, I would say this thing could put up a good fight. This massive brontosaurus looking creature Again, I can't even fathom if these things were walking the earth today. I'm about as tall as that that leg bone right there on this thing. In fact, here is a footprint that it made. This is my foot compared to a brontosaurus foot. I can stand several times over in a single footprint. Here is a Parasaurolophus, and I think this one ate plants. This was not a meat-eating dinosaur, but just again how massive these animals were. Just crazy again to think that they used to walk this earth. Love the bill on its head. Okay, now we're talking. Welcome to the world of Tyrannosaurus Rex, and there is Sue coming up on display. She used to be down below in the Grand Hall, but has now since moved up above in this exhibit. And right there on display is Sue, the Tyrannosaurus Rex's real skull. Look at the size of that. It was discovered in western South Dakota in the Black Hills by Sue Hendrickson. And that is who the dinosaur is named after, Sue. Sue Hendrickson was the woman that discovered the most complete T-Rex skeleton ever to be found. Just look at those teeth. Those are real T-Rex teeth right there. And here's a picture of Sue Hendrickson, the paleontologist that discovered the most complete T-Rex fossil 
ever to this day in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And without further ado, here is Sue the T-Rex, the most complete T-Rex skeleton ever discovered. Now her head was what we just looked at. This is actually a model, the head on this one, but the rest of the skeleton is real. The real head was too heavy to be cast on the rest of her body, so they put a a fake one on, or a, a cast of the real skull, but look at this. This is insane. How big this beast was, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it's most complete discovery. Look at the claws on its feet. Boy. This is incredible. I love this new exhibit. They've done a great job with this. I'm actually really happy that they moved it up here. Could you imagine standing in front of an actual Tyrannosaurus Rex? I mean, obviously I would be completely screwed. This would be the scariest thing in the world. And I gotta quote Jurassic Park here. Must go faster, must go faster, must go faster, must go faster. So Sue died because she ate infected meat. That's like me eating Taco Bell. Did she eat Taco Bell back then? I don't know, probably not. So I'm now entering the Quaternary period. This is after the age of the dinosaurs. And look at that giant sloth. Look at the size of this thing. So this was like the age of the giant mammals, the woolly mammoth, the saber-toothed tiger. I, I, I couldn't even imagine seeing a sloth that big out my back window. And right before the last ice age, these really, it's crazy to think that these actually were alive not that long ago. Early cavemen, early humans were around on the earth when these mammals were. Look at these short faced bears. That is insane. Here is the largest deer that ever walked the planet, the Irish deer, and the woolly mammoth. Just crazy how much bigger woolly mammoths were when compared to the modern day African elephants. And 
there's the saber-toothed tiger. Just look at those pinchers. Last stop of the day, the ancient Americas. And one of my favorite displays here are the totem poles that they have from the Pacific Northwest. So I want to try to see that before the museum closes. And a really cool sculpture here. So these are the native tribes of the Pacific Northwest. And these totem poles, these sculptures are just incredible. And the culture where they're carved out canoes. Look at that. It's a reimagining of what their homes would have looked like. The Pacific Northwest tribes, these ornamental totem poles. She's tending to the fire. You can see all the fish hanging up above for food. That one is holding what looks to be a knife. He's got a impish looking grin on his face, which I hope he's not trying to attack this woman with a baby. <laughs> it's kind of kind of weird. Just look at these masks. Just exotic and beautiful. And here's the clothes that they wore. Hundreds of years ago, that is amazing. All the colors. Here is a shaman dancing. That's what the sign says. This will give you nightmares. I remember seeing this when I was younger. It scared the heck out of me here at the Field Museum at all of these ancient tribal masks. And actually, I, I should restate that these, these aren't that ancient hundreds of years old as opposed to thousands. Look at that, it's a creepy looking puppet. And these, again, these bird masks. Boy, that is just creepy. Look at all these ceremonial pipes that they carved. And these are rattles. The sound of rattles provided a sense of spirituality and power to their dances and rituals. Look at all of these masks. Just wild looking. Just look at these massive totem poles. These things are huge. They've got an amazing display of these here in the Native American exhibit or the ancient America exhibit I should say that one's got his tongue sticking out circa 1890 for that one I am surrounded by totem poles This is just awesome. Oh, look at this. It's like a bear. About ready to pounce on me. Look at that. Yeah, a mythical grizzly bear is what this is supposed to be. You can see it's got faces in his hands. This is by far one of my favorite exhibits here in the Field Museum, the Northwestern tribes, of the, well, the Pacific Northwestern tribes here. These totem poles are absolutely breathtaking. And I almost feel like this is an exhibit that a lot of people pass by. But of the, if I had a top five things to see here at 
the museum Sue the dinosaur being one, the lions of Savo being another. The totem poles of the Pacific Northwest would definitely be in my top five. I'll think of the other two later. <laughs> top three, let's say a top three. Sue the T-Rex, the lions of Savo, and the totem poles of the Pacific Northwest. Those are my top three must-see at the Chicago Field Museum. You can see these blankets of Shamu, the killer whale. Whole display of blankets with all this just incredible artwork and more totem poles here as well. What a grandiose building. Exiting through the swivel doors. And look at this view, the skyline of Chicago. Kind of see the Sears Tower poking through over there, but yeah, just gorgeous outside. And you can see the shores of Lake Michigan a little bit beyond the trees. So even outside the museum, you have an incredible view of the surrounding city. I meant to add five things. Okay, so top five things. I just remembered the other one. I, I saw a lot today. Top five things to see at the Chicago Field Museum, in my opinion. Number one, Sue the T-Rex. Number two, the Lions of Savo. Number three, the Four Seasons with the Deer. That taxidermy display is a just an incredible one. It's a historic one. A monumental one. So the Four Seasons, um, the totem poles of the Pacific Northwest, and the mummies of ancient Egypt. Those are my top five things to see here at the Chicago Field Museum, one of the most incredible museums in the United States. Well, not even just the United States, one of the most incredible museums in the world. So if you're ever in Chicago, this is a must stop here on museum campus. The Shedd Aquarium is behind me and Lake Michigan is right over there. You can see Navy Pier where the Ferris wheel is in Grant Park right here, stretching to the Chicago skyline. So with that, thanks for watching everyone. This is Eric with the Get Me Out of Here vlog and it's time for me to get out of here. Mm -hmm.